Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Kushwaha Ji, Professor La, Professor Sina, Professor Singh, Professor Das, Professor Chakrawal, Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, other distinguished dignitaries, the deans and HODs, Dr. Akash Ranjan, the convener of this event, the faculty, the students, the ladies and gentlemen. First, let me express my gratitude to the Honorable VC and the Organizing Committee for enabling me to be part of this inaugural session of Happy Media Tech event. A lot has been said already by the illustrious speakers before me, so I don't have much to add. But nevertheless, since I have been invited to this event, I would put forward some of my main points before this August audience. Everybody who is participating in this event would agree that uh, happiness, and particularly the universal happiness, is at such a premium these days in the, in the contemporary world. And uh, therefore, I must put on record my huge sense of appreciation for the organizing committee for envisaging such an important theme, uh, universal happiness in post-truth area. Or era. As has been mentioned by some of the uh, illustrious speakers before me, that happiness is a state of mind which is uh, not necessarily a reflection of socio-economic empowerment or the level of education, but also is governed by a host of other determinants physical, mental, spiritual well-being, as has been mentioned by many other speakers, and the value system which one subscribes to it. Equally important are some other external factors. Some people alluded to the governance system or the governance deficit, the environmental quality, the social and cultural capital. And therefore, when one talks about happiness, one would imagine that, uh, uh, that the countries which, have, uh, which are the leading economies of the world, which have a fairly good governance system, uh, would be the front runners, front runners as far as the happiness index is concerned. But as has been mentioned, the tiny countries like Finland or Bhutan or some other countries, they are way at the top in these rankings. And it is mainly due to the fact that uh, the governance system, their governance system delivers on public. The public has a certain faith and the trust in the governance system. And there is a great deal of the social equity prevalent in those countries. Social welfare measures which have reached to the general public in those countries. And that's why those countries, in spite of the fact that they may not be the leading economies of the world, they are some of the happiest countries in the world. Now what has changed since ancient times when in, in India, for example, there was a great deal of emphasis on acquisition of the right knowledge that knowledge coupled with certain values. The values which were uh, enshrined in our uh, text, the holy book, the Upanishad, the Gita, that we have to work for the greater good of the society. We have to be physically, mentally and spiritually healthy. We have to detach ourselves from the, from the material and look for finding the truth within 
and therefore was self-actualization or self-realization. So these were the values we in India, ancient India, subscribed to. Whereas the Western civilizations were more uh, uh, more into the realm of seeking dominance over others, whether it was economic domi dominance or, or uh, political dominance or military dominance. So the two civilizations uh, were very uh, different in character. But what has changed over the last century is uh, that the huge population growth and the huge uh, expansion of technology, the media, the markets, and uh, the, the consequent asymmetric distribution and access to the resources, uh, and uh, the well entrenched political ideologies and the, and the beliefs have led to a lot of strife, a lot of unhappiness uh, among the people across the world. Uh, if you look at uh, the primary reasons, so uh, one can actually zero in on some of these. Technology use has become more pervasive. That has created its own stress. Media is all pervasive. Some of the speakers earlier did say that uh, because of this huge expansion of the uh, social media platforms, there is enormous amount of information available. Now the real challenge is how much of it is authentic, how much of it is uh, fake, and as I said, the political ideologies and the belief systems are so well entrenched that it's very difficult these days to ascertain or decipher what is the truth and what is the uh, authentic content. So that is the big challenge. Then the governance deficit. Uh, the environment quality are some of the other concerns. Uh, some of the speakers did talk about the sustainable development goals. So the monarchy yeah. and from the material, material speakers. But that's what Gita teaches you. Upanishads teach that you detach yourself because that is also a cause of suffering or unhappiness. But more importantly, the ethical conduct. Ethical conduct, which is also mentioned in our new education policy. We have to have students coming out of the higher education system who have the global competency. Global competency, global skills, but with right value with right ethical conduct. And this conduct that we just elaborated today, it has to be through your thoughts and actions. Your actions should be such that they do not adversely impact anyone else. You must have respect for different ideologies, different belief systems, because that is so essential for a harmonious, peaceful society. And uh, here I would like to uh, mentioned that our our lifestyle choices ought to be such that they are not resource intensive. We must take care that, that we whatever we do we we make sustainable consumption as part of our lifestyle choices because we also are responsible for environmental quality. So I think we uh, we. Uh, as a nation, and in particular the student population, has to ensure that your consumption practices are sustainable. And, and, and keep it in mind that when you are very indulgent, as far as the material use is concerned, or the resource use is concerned, you are adversely impacting someone somewhere in, the, in some other part of the world. And therefore, it is so important that the right acquisition of knowledge and competencies, you become physically, mental, uh, mentally strong, and uh, won't do any harm if you are also literal, spiritually inclined. Your spiritual health is also uh, so important for overall happiness. 
And finally, I would just like to quote what this great man, Dalai Lama said, if you want others to be happy, be compassionate. If you want yourself to be happy, be compassionate. So the compassion is so integral, is so integral to be a happy individual. And uh, therefore, for any institute in the higher education system, for, for, uh, for your holistic growth, for your holistic development, for your holistic personality, you try to inculcate in yourself three things, compassion, the charitable trait in you, and the humanism. In Hindi,